So, welcome back to Blender 4 Games, and before we start, I just gonna thank you all for 100 subscribers. The support is through the roof. I mean, thank you all. I really, really appreciate it for all the likes, comments, views, shares, everything. Everything is appreciated. And as long as you support the channel, as long as you want me to make the videos, and you have suggestions and stuff, and like, uh, and problems i'll be there i'll be making everything from for blender to be implemented into the video game industry so today we're gonna talk about going from blender to cryengine so let's start so from all of the excitement i even forgot uh, forgot to tell you what we're gonna do so uh i'll do the same things as the last time so origin and shading scale lod's collision and multiple materials and you're like, why are we not gonna... Wait, let me just delete this material. <laughs> uh, why are we not gonna do uh, light maps for the baked lighting? Well, CryEngine doesn't use light maps. It uses real-time lighting because CryEngine is real-time engine. So pretty much what you see in your viewport is what you get. And that's why I actually really, really love CryEngine. No hate for Unity and, and uh, Unreal Engine. They're all pretty much the same engines. They're, this is just preferential talk. So, and also I'm gonna mention this, I'll do everything in one go, so we're gonna do everything in Blender, then we're gonna export that FBX, and I'll show you that it actually worked in, uh, in <laughs> CryEngine, yeah, so let me start, Origin and Shading. First off, I'll say CryEngine is a lot different than the rest of the engines we did, so Origin, right, uh, right now, it's not gonna be the world center for CryEngine, it's gonna use the origin of your main mesh so your hero prop mesh which is perfect so where, wherever you put this origin it's gonna be the origin in CryEngine I'm uh, sorry for like stuttering a little bit every time I want to say CryEngine in my head I have Unreal Engine or Unity and I'm like just say CryEngine please <laughs> anyway let me just move on uh, for the shading pretty much CryEngine is gonna recognize your shading so if I have something like this here and here I mean the hard edges CryEngine is gonna be is gonna see that but every time I do this just in case so when I export my FBX I go to the geometry tab and smooth by faces I do this in every engine uh, as I mentioned before just in case for it's not that important but you know I just like to be secured so for the scale big props for Blender guys so Everything you see in these dimensions, uh, as long as your scale is one, it's gonna be the dimensions in all of the engines. And that's pretty much what I like about Blender, what they fixed in this uh, 2.8 update. So let me just, so pretty much when we import this, it's gonna be 1.8 meters at scale 111. And I think it's gonna be the same size as the character. I just want it to be the same size as the character when we import it to see if it actually worked. So moving to the LODs, I'll just duplicate my mesh like every time. So Control D, Control D to have two meshes. I'll hide the main one. And in Chrome Engine, naming convention is really, really, really important. So for LODs, you're gonna name it like this. Wait, what? One second. I think you call this cache. Then you say LOD1 and the name of your mesh, so gun. And for the second one, you actually do the same thing. So cache LOD2, then you say underscore gun. And that's pretty much it. But let me just do the modifier so we see the difference between them when we import it. So modifier, decimate. So the first level is going to be something like, uh, something like this something noticeable and the second uh, LOD is gonna be the, 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 the least polygons we have so that's made the broken thing so l at least a little bit let, let me do this yeah something like this you're gonna notice but that's not it CryEngine actually works on the method called parent child so parent is your main object so gun for this thing so the thing you made is gonna be your parent and your child are gonna be LODs and collision so I'll do this even for the collision and you're like how do I make uh, parent how do I make my parent child connections it's actually pretty easy you just take your LOD one you're like you pretty much click it and you like drag it with your shift 
and you see drop as a parent and that's it do that for lod1 and lod2 and you're done with your collisions uh, I'll just hide them for for showing off the collisions now. So pretty much collisions is next on our list. What we do is we make our perfect collisions every time. I'm in my edit mode, so I make something like horrendous like every time. So you guys see it. So something like, um, yeah, something like this. And as I said, naming convention is everything. You're just going to say cache. Uh, proxy not proofy proxy and you're gonna do underscore your mesh name so in my case gun and as I said before parent uh, child connection is needed just drag it shift and drop to set up parent that's it and actually that's not it sorry for saying that said go to the material tab for proxy gun and add a new material called proxy and I'll show you what this actually does in CryEngine. I actually made it before so I'll just use this one proxy because it doesn't have 001. I, I just want everything to be look clean. It doesn't matter if you, you can name it whatever you want for the material. But uh, and the next I, I don't know what I'm saying. I mean, I'm blabbering again. Sorry for that guys. So next up is multi multiple materials. This time I'm gonna actually, I'll do the same thing I do every time. So I'll separate the object and say I need this stuff to be one material. And I'll do that, I'll do the material. Let me do a gun for the these parts. And I'll say, uh, I'll delete this material, say new, and I'll say rest of the mats. And I'll actually combine it to, to a single object again, just because we have that parent-child connections and we don't want the, the LODs to break, we don't have one the proxy to break, so if you want multiple materials, please just leave the one object at the end and just pretty much join it to the gun one. And first of all, pick the, the one which is separated with 001 and then says, select the second one and join them because it's going to use the second name. And as you can see, you have gun and rest of the mats on here and all of the connections are still working so if i do this as you can see it's gonna say it's not gonna say it's gonna say something it's not oh it says drop to clear the parent so it's pretty much saying it, it is a parent again so now let's is that everything on the list yeah so let's go to cryogen and show you guys it actually works so export fbx this time for YouTube, well, FX, because I made a mistake on the first recording. <laughs> yeah, I'm dumb. So let me jump in and go to Tools, FBX Import Mesh. And I'll say File, Import. Where is the, well, is it this one? Well, FX, yep, that's the one, Open. And as you can see, my mesh is there. And if I pull this to the side, you can see the, the gun is my parent and these are my child's, not mine, but you know, the guns. <laughs> and as you can see, LOD2 and LOD1 are automatically set and the proxy you have to set yourself. So just save physics proxies and let it, let it compile. And if we go to the material one, I'll just say for this material, I don't think you have to really use the proxy material, but I'll do it just in case every time because I'll say this, proxy only, no draw. It's not gonna give me a draw call after this, so it's not gonna be any big problems. And as you can see, the rest of the materials are pretty much there and they have their color. And what you do is just say file, uh, save as, and I'll call this one uh, gun. Final, f yep, save copying the file, it did everything perfectly, and if we say gun, did I say final? Yep. And if I drag it, you can, I actually did, I am displaying the collisions, so, to display collisions, you just go here and you say display, I think, let me say, nope, show physics proc, so yeah, pretty much this. And you're like, I see broken, I can see my LOD, but not the real mesh. But if we get closer, voila, 
it's changing the LODs. And if you want it to be more or less, you just go to your properties of the object and you go like, well, let me see, view distance, not, not the view, the LOD distance, and you just like make it really, really small. So when you move, uh, it's gonna go, 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 go. I made it really, really small. So if I bump it up, you can see it's actually changing the distance from changing the collisions. So I'll just uh, go. I think it's time to go to the game mode. Just let me see the the mass physics settings. So yeah, it says the weight type. Uh, mass. Uh, the mass means it's gonna move. Is it? Uh, let me let me just calm down. So mass means if I come closer to it, it's gonna actually move like a ball. So if I go to the collision, it's we're gonna be able to move the object. And in, immovable, you know, it's pretty much self-explanatory. It's not gonna move. But let's go to the game mode. Some things we never, something we never did in this tutorial, and it's going inside a little bit. So, but you can see the height is pretty much same as this. Oh, we pushed it. Go away! As you can see, my collision is moving. Oh yeah, let me show the collision where is the where is the object. So display. Uh, where is the collision? Show physics progress. As you can see, our bad collision is there, and if we just do the movable so you guys see this and if we go to tools or not tools game switch to game mode i'll again go to the first person so f1 is actually for it and if i do if i start coming like here as you can see i'm not going to be able to move it if i go here i'll go away from it if i shoot it nothing happens and that's actually it for this video it's going to be a lot shorter Hopefully, it's a better version of the tutorial. It's a little bit faster for you guys. I'm still gonna write down in the, I don't know, descriptions the time time of, the time steps of what we did at what time. Sorry for my English again. And hopefully you're gonna enjoy it. And hopefully it helped. Uh, again, subscribe for more. Like, share, like just to support. Um, already you love the support i can't believe we how fast we hit 100 subs really really happy and proud of you guys for it not me you guys you guys are doing it everything and in the next tutorial i have a huge huge like want for modular parts how to texture them how it make how to make it seamless how to like snap it and move it side by side so it doesn't break the illusion it uh, doesn't like make, look seamless and it snaps right to the other side and we're gonna do that so the next that's the next thing we're gonna do hopefully soon my, my time time is hazard as well so i'll just stop blabbling and i'll see you guys in the next episode and have a good day